So while everyone out here is talking about the new Switch skill and Malzano, but for us who's in this video right now, guys, it's here. We can finally build a harem in Monster Hunter. Let's go! Fiorain, Luchika, join with me. I wish we could have her in the group. Oh, okay. Don't worry, sweet Minoto. You won't be left in Kamura no more. Hinoa, you're coming too. Okay, alright, yeah, we're just gonna do this 69th Magnamalo. I haven't gotten the ruby yet. Anyway, it's cool to see how we get to invite some of the NPCs on both Elgado and Kamura. As far as I remember, some of the Monster Hunter Frontier team are part of the development process of Sunbreak. And if I remember correctly, there was a similar mechanic like this in Frontier called Rasta. I'll let the Frontier players share more about it. Although Sunbreak wasn't the first time we ever got to experience something like this. One of you mentioned in the comments, we've experienced something quite similar back in Monster Hunter World Iceborne and Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. If you remember, Aiden is helping us during the Fatalis hunt and all of us are defending the gates from Velcana. Good times. So far from the live event, we only got a few teasers from the NPCs or followers joining certain hunts. Throughout this video, I thought of bouncing off some ideas and questions ranging from NPC AI balances to skill difficulty and rewards. Let's first start off with the AI balances. In the trailer, we can't really see the health bars of the NPC, and after watching this Malzeno clip a crap ton of times, Fiorain just gets staggered with some of Malzeno's attacks, but that's about it. Unfortunately, it didn't really tell us if they are invincible. I'm thinking, the NPC wouldn't really cart, it might just heal itself or pop a life powder before it even faints. Because let's face it, would you still bring an NPC if they end up contributing to the quest cart limit? I've read some of your comments in the poll, so you probably wouldn't. I also wondered, do the NPC or followers have a behavior mechanic? You know how with our palic and palamutes, we can choose the behavior prioritizing large monsters, balance, or small monsters. I wonder if the NPCs have that too. Like they can attack the monsters aggressively or they are just passive and want to support you instead. Besides the behavior, one of the crucial points one of you mentioned in this poll, will the NPC or followers cause more distraction than help? This is if not very important because without a doubt, this will be a trade-off that some of us have to make. Here are several reasons why some of the hunters think this might be a distraction. As of right now, we don't know how this would turn out in game. Since I use the great sword, predicting the next position of the monster is crucial to me. So I'd have to think if it's really worth taking an NPC or follower during hunts. Same goes with some of you. Based on the trailer, the NPCs just follow you around and mimic the movesets. And when you are engaged on a hunt, they go bonkers on the monster. Either way, I'm alright with it. The next thing I'm curious about is, do the followers strategically use the items? I was wondering how would the NPCs use the items? Do they use it independently? Or is there like a cooldown command? Like how in Monster Hunter World, you can tell your palico to play some traps in healing. But based on this clip, it seems like Fiorain just pops a life powder on its own and places the traps independently. So yeah. It'd be cool if you can ask them. I wonder if they can help you with sleep bombing. Besides the item usage, do they know how to use the endemic life? If let's say there's like an endemic life nearby while hunting the monster, are they gonna pick it up? Are they gonna use it? We do know they can wyvern ride, but I wonder if they could do this too. Speaking of wyvern riding, they did mention the followers sometimes do the wyvern ride, but I wonder, with the new wyvern riding settings, could you disable their wyvern riding? Probably not. I hope it's not a big deal. With this question alone, it will be the birth of a new Monster Hunter tier list. <laughs> I just saw it coming as soon as they introduced the followers. A lot of factors could come in play here. It's not just their weapon, but also the questions that I've mentioned a while ago, like their behavior and so on. It's going to be interesting. Speaking of weapons, can you share them your equipment? I know this is unlikely to happen, for now at least, but it would be cool. I don't know about you guys, but I don't want my hard grind 
equipment to be sitting on the box. I want my followers to use them freely if they are joining with me. Also, if the NPCs are going to join with us, does having them in the quest scale the difficulty? You know how in multiplayer, they adjust the difficulty of the monster based on how many players are there on the quest? I wonder if it's going to be the same with the NPCs. What do you think? They did mention something about exclusive rewards from the followers, but I wonder if they mean by extra end quest rewards or special equipment or layered armor from the NPC. I'm thinking it could be end rewards to help reduce the monster grind for other players, but let me know what you think. It's nice to see how we got this mechanic in Monster Hunter. They did mention it's an optional thing, but I think this will help out other players, especially if they want to grind for monster parts. I hope the followers AI is competent enough. If not, I'll probably ditch my Monster Hunter harem. <laughs> Speaking of monster parts to grind, in this next video, I'll be sharing you why Seregios is an amazing monster to grind in Sunbreak.